Hey everybody, BrickLover18 here today and welcome to our YouTube special of Ask Brick. Today's YouTube special of Ask Brick is basically consists of a bunch of different questions that I've received over the last couple of days about YouTube in general. Decorate your room with this handmade wall decal of the evolution of the Lego minifigure. These decals from Be A Creative Designer look great and come in a large variety of colors and sizes. Check the link in the description to learn more as well as don't forget to watch the review video I've made of this decal. Subscribe to BrickLover18 for more daily Lego videos. Let's get right into these questions. We do have a lot of questions today so bear with me. What things do you feel you need to start a YouTube channel? Here's a few things that I definitely recommend. A good computer, like a nice fast computer with a good editing software. I mean, you can probably use Windows Movie Maker, I've never really used that, but I use iMovie and I think iMovie is really good. It's not the best, it's definitely not the best, but it's such a step up from the old software I used to use. iMovie is definitely best for me because now I upload everything in 4K. Another thing I definitely have is a good camera. If you want to use your cell phone or something like that, like go for it, but I really recommend you invest in a camera like I have done with a good memory stick and stuff like that. Just because it's so much easier to set up, you can get better angles, better zoom. I put my microphone right on top of my camera so I can get good audio and don't have to match it up later. So definitely for me, a good camera is a must. Lighting, a lot of people, like even my first video, a lot of people don't use lighting in their videos, but I think that's a mistake. You really need lighting and I'm constantly wishing to upgrade my lights. Like as you can see, I've already upgraded them this year, which is perfect. Just my videos from last year compared to this year with the four extra lights is really, really good. I also find it very important if you have a schedule for YouTube. I just started doing this a couple months ago and I really regret not doing it sooner. I bought a wipe, like as you can see, a wipe off board where I just write what I'm going to plan on. If I change it or don't upload, I just erase it and very important. I definitely have started out with a schedule on YouTube. I used to upload like willy nilly where I'd upload maybe four videos one day and then no videos for two weeks just because I didn't really know any different. But now one video a day has worked really well for me and the schedule works very well to keep me on track and keep me planning. The final thing that a lot of people might not think of of needing to start a YouTube channel but I highly recommend is an external hard drive. So this is mine here. It's just a you know, small one terabyte portable hard drive. All my video footage is on this. All my my edited footage, my unedited footage, my raw files, my thumbnails, my music, every single thing I need to upload a YouTube video is on this hard drive and it's just really good because if I ever went somewhere and needed to bring my stuff, I just unplug it and I go, all my files are on that. Everything from early or late 2015, all my raw footage, and then videos all the way from 2013, 14, things like that just all on this hard drive and it really works well and I highly recommend getting one. I know a lot of people don't save their video footage, like they film a video, they delete their footage, that's that. I personally can't do that, I myself need to save my footage just because if I ever want to re-upload anything or all my footage is gone, plus I just, I'm a pack horse so I like to keep everything. Do your friends know about your channel? No, my friends do not know about my channel. I have a couple friends who used to know about the channel but then we like drifted apart before we got back closer together I guess you say so by this time they have forgotten about my channel and it was actually kind of funny a couple days ago I was with all my friends we were all at lunchtime at high school and they said as a joke I should start a YouTube channel and they all thought it was you know they were just saying you should and then I kind of laughed because I'm like well I already have one but I'm not gonna tell you about it because it's a secret no my friends do not know about my YouTube channel and I do not want them to know Brick Matt 809 how did you start YouTube? I started YouTube one day when I woke up and was just watching a bunch of random YouTube videos because I had nothing else to do and I like stumbled across a Lego room tour and then I typed in Lego room tour and then I got a million like not a million but a lot of responses about Lego room tour so then I just started watching everybody's like Lego room tours like I really enjoyed it so I started typing in Lego and then that's when I got like see like all these other different Lego results and realized how there's a whole I didn't even know about a community, I just realized, hey, people are uploading like Lego videos to YouTube. That's awesome, I'm gonna do that as well. And how-to videos were a big thing, like then for the next couple weeks, I would spend, I would build and do Lego all day, all day, and then I'd search like how to build this, how to build that, and my YouTube experience just sort of brought in from there. But that's really how I started YouTube, I saw everybody making these videos, like room tours, and I said, hey, I could do this, like I have a camera. I made some movies before, like I, I really enjoyed editing and stuff at that time. 
I can do this as well. So my first video was like a how-to video. I didn't use any lights, and my whole family was in the basement when I made that video, so I had to record over the audio later. Doctor Who Ate My Bacon asked, Will you ever make a live stream? Because I would love to see that. Yes, I, I have done live streams before. I've been on a couple live streams. Live streams are fun. I just find that you have to pick like the perfect time or nobody shows up. And I can't ever schedule a live stream because I'm never really sure what's going to be going on at that time. Like I've even thought of doing live stream Ask Brick episodes, but I could never be consistent and I never could guarantee I would be there like say 5 o'clock to do the Ask Brick episode and things like that. I'm just too busy. So that's why I like to film everything and edit again. Disney Freak 309 Were you inspired by the first reviews of Lego sets on YouTube like The Brick Show and what year did you have the idea for a Lego channel? So I'll say this, I started my YouTube channel on July 7th, 2012. I think I uploaded my first video on the 11th in the same year, 2012. Um, so the second part was that was, were you inspired by the first reviewers of Lego sets on YouTube? Not really to be quite honest with you. I, I'll even admit it today, I don't really like watching Lego reviews on YouTube. I think some depends on the set. They can be kind of boring, especially if you have the set. But if I'm gonna, here's what I'm gonna say. If I go to specifically buy a set, like before I bought my Ferris wheel this past January, I watched so many people's reviews of it on YouTube because I wanted to see what it was like, some of the features. But if I see a review on my, you know, my subscription feed, 90% of the time I'm just gonna scroll by it because I'm not really interested to see that. But if it's a really cool vintage set or something like that, I may watch it, but still 90% of the time I'm just gonna keep scrolling. So I wouldn't say I was so much inspired by those YouTubers because I never really watched their videos, but they didn't, and they never really had any inspiration to me. Like I subscribed to The Perk Show for, I don't even know how long ago I've been subscribed, way before they had 100,000 subscribers, probably 50,000. And I specifically remember subscribing to Jang Bricks when he had 50, thousand now he's got 500 plus thousand so I've been subscribed for a long time to him because I, I don't know he was still a really big youtuber 15,000 subscribers was way more than the probably 500 or something I had Brendan Wong asked what makes a good YouTube channel in your opinion and would you consider your channel one well in my opinion I'd consider a good YouTube channel somebody that uploads like actually uploads so there's a lot of youtubers out there that'll be really good for a week and then never upload anything again for three months then they'll come back and say oh, I'm back I promise and then they're gone again and I don't like that that to me does not make a good YouTube channel because they're not really committed to making videos to me a good YouTube channel is somebody that makes content regularly makes their content nice and interesting I like when people interact with their fans I hate people who put YouTube videos up there and that's it like they don't respond to any comments I don't even think they look at the comments I don't like that I think youtubers should be able to interact with their fans and be friendly because we are the ones watching your videos and we are the one that's helping you earn your living and things like that uh, good quality is very important I think to ha if you can see the video and it's got good lighting I think that's important because I don't want to be looking at a set with cluttered background unless it's supposed to be a cluttered background like sometimes you see the video where the backgrounds perfectly blurred out and you can just see the item that's cool but when it's people with a cluttered background or stuff in front of their camera but behind their subject that's annoying I don't like that final part good sound is also important because if I can't understand what you're saying that's not good do I consider my channel one I would consider my channel a pretty good channel it's definitely not the best channel and it's definitely not close to the best channel but I think it's pretty good and I'm pretty happy and I'm constantly improving like this week I've started using the white backdrop not this week but I started using a white backdrop and actually started post-production editing the footage I've always thought of that as like you know modifying the colors and lighting I've always thought of that was cheating but now I realized doing that definitely improves the quality of my videos which is definitely what I'm going for unknown asked what got you motivated to get your YouTube channel running smoothly I wouldn't say anything really motivated me, just the fact that I really enjoy making these videos and I guess the subscriber number constantly growing is definitely a huge motivation. Like I don't like when I don't upload for a couple days and I can see my subscriber number actually decreasing. I like when it increases and I, you know, people enjoy my content, they comment, they interact. It's people that interact with my videos that kind of keep me motivated because if nobody's watching them then why like I could some say you're not supposed to make YouTube videos so people watch them but you're definitely supposed to make YouTube videos for people to watch them otherwise like why are you making them but I like people when they watch my videos they want to talk back like they interact and that's really what keeps me motivated just the subscribers and the people watching me plus it's a lot of fun to do this I wouldn't do it if Plus the people watching me, I definitely would not do YouTube if I didn't enjoy it, but I thoroughly do enjoy it. 
3 fm 2 asks, What should I do on my YouTube channel, Minecraft or Lego? I'm kind of stuck, I like both, but I don't have the right equipment for recording video games on iOS. Well, I guess deciding what you want to do on your YouTube channel is really up to you. Which one, I would say which one do you love the best? If you play Minecraft, like 24 hours a day, and then Lego when you're really bored of Minecraft or you got kicked off your computer or got it taken away because you were bad or something, I would definitely do a Minecraft YouTube channel. But if you play Minecraft once in a while, but then you spend all your weekends in your Lego room or with your Lego, I would say do Lego. It's whatever is passionate enough for you because the viewer will be able to tell in your voice or what you're talking about, what you really like more. So I think you should definitely do what interests you the most. And that's why I do Lego and not some other kind of channel because Lego is what interests me the most. Lego is what I do the most and it's just great. But in regards to not having the proper equipment, nobody really ever has the proper equipment. So I think you've kind of just got to get started, get some fan base going, and just start enjoying to make it and then upgrade. Because you might start making Minecraft videos or Lego videos and realize how much you hate it. And now you've got all this equipment when you absolutely hate doing it. So I just start off with whatever you had. I started with my old camcorder, no lights, and a piece of white Bristol board and I realized how much I liked it and that's why I'm still doing it today with a more professional camera, more professional lighting, and more, well I'm still using Bristol board to film this video, but still. Just start out, do what you really like to do. The final question is from Tut Bricks NZ. What's your favorite thing about YouTube? My favorite thing about YouTube has got to be just the interaction with fans, interaction with people, and just the fact that there's an online community where you can post your video, get feedback, talk about your video, discuss what was all that, like, you know, discuss what was in the video. And it's just a lot of fun to have, you know, friends on the internet all over the world. It really, I think it's amazing, really, honestly amazing to go to my, like, analytics and see how my videos have been viewed in many different countries. I remember, I haven't checked recently, but in April 2015, my YouTube videos had been viewed in a couple, like I think 120 different countries. I didn't even know there was 120 countries, but the fact that I had been viewed in 120 different countries, I thought that was really, really awesome, really amazing actually. YouTube's fun to do, YouTube's easy to do, and it's just, as I said, a lot of fun, and that's really comes down to it. That's why I do YouTube, because it's a lot of fun. Thanks everybody so much for watching this Ask Brick special here on YouTube about YouTube. I really hope you enjoyed. I'm sorry this is a much longer video. Looking at my screen now, it's about 17 minutes, so that's a really long time. I don't know what I'll edit it down to, but I had a really fun episode, and if you have any suggestions, if you ever want to do like a certain topic special on Ask Brick again, please just let me know down in the comments below. As well as if you have any other YouTube questions about what I've said, feel free to send me an email or even comment down below, and I'll either respond in another Ask Brick video, or I'll just send you the email with your answer. Thanks everybody so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. Have a great day.